What's up everybody? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. I'm Anthony on today's video. I wanted to show you guys some hardcore proof uh, or an example of exactly how bad things can get if you are trying to grow food in a high humidity, high moisture environment. So stay tuned. Today we're going to be talking about some fungal issues. Now this is something I've been combating a lot living in South Carolina. It's one of those things where you have to plan accordingly. You have to plant things that don't have uh, high propensity of getting fungal issues. And you have to make sure that when you are planting things, you are doing everything possible to avoid letting moisture set on the leaves. So you have to practice good habits. And even when you do practice good habits, you still have issues like this. So I want to show you all uh, what I found in my strawberries a couple days ago in hopes that maybe seeing what I'm dealing with, if you have the same issue, maybe this will give you an opportunity to fight it, to fight back, or uh, change your game plan so you're not losing everything. What's up everybody, it is mid-June, and I wanted to give you all an update on the strawberries that I planted last March. I built this bed, I'll put a video, you know, a link down in the video below, that way you can watch it yourself, but I, put, I built this bed because I wanted to make sure I got strawberry harvest since the last one. The last bet I made, birds would attack the, you know, I wouldn't get hardly anything because the birds would kill or eat all of the strawberries before I got a chance at them. So I put this on here, a netting, to make sure that I can get as many strawberries as possible. And I can tell you point blank, it has worked fabulously. I've gotten so many strawberries this year, it's actually kind of ridiculous. However, I guess all good things must come to an end because as of about two weeks ago, excuse me, as of about two weeks ago, we got a lot of rain. Uh, it's been a very dry spring here in South Carolina. However, all of June, it has basically rained every single day, and the humidity is up dramatically. Well, if you know anything about planting, gardening with high humidity, then you know that that's going to bring fungal issues. And unfortunately, that is what's happened to my strawberries. As I was coming out yesterday, I noticed some of the fruits had a couple blotches on them. I picked them off really quickly, hoping it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. However, as I do further inspection, this one right here looks good. But then, come over here, you see blotches on the, on the fruit. Let's see, prime example right here. Look at this strawberry. That is a fungal issue, that is anthracnose. It's usually, you can tell because you get that orangey color spore that develops in all the fruits. So this is definitely a fungal issue. It has hit almost every single one of my plants in this bed. So uh, it looks like my days of harvesting they, these strawberries are just about over because about every single new strawberry has this on there which is unfortunate but hey uh, these things have been putting out since the end of April so I've gotten you know a good month and a half of production out of it I've literally filled up like three gallon bags of strawberries so I can't complain but this is unfortunate I didn't want this to happen so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to try a copper fungicide see if that works I'm gonna spray all these plants because they all look still pretty, you know, relatively healthy. It's just a little bit of fungal issue on the fruit. So, uh, I'm definitely going to go ahead and spray all these. However, the ones over here, if I had to take a good stab in the dark, this is crown rot. Most likely from the same fung uh, fungus, the anthracnus. So that one and that one. This one's trying to hang on, trying to replicate, open up new leaves, but I don't think it's going to do well. And that one's just getting hit too. So uh, I got three crowns that got hit pretty good. Yes, that is onions. I tried planting onions in here to see if there was a, excuse me, a companion planting benefit and not really. Still got hit by slugs like I always do. And obviously I got anthracnose. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take that one, that one, and that one, dig them up, get rid of them, and uh, keep those spots just covered with straw for the, end of the rest of this year. That way I can get the 
anthracnose that's in the soil to die before I replant. I'll probably move the strawberries anyway because I don't want to try to reinfect anything that I may put in here. So I'll probably put something else in here for the time being, but we'll see. Uh, but for these over here, I'm going to spray with the copper fungicide every week or so. And I will let you know down in a pinned comment how successful that was in the coming weeks. But I just wanted to give you a good bird's eye view of what it looks like. That way, if you have the same issue in your garden, you know exactly what it is. And don't worry about these little things right here. This is iron phosphate baits for slugs because slugs absolutely destroy your strawberries. So, yeah. Just want to give you all a heads up. Oh, and one more thing that can absolutely help you all. I'm going to walk you to the other side of the garden and I'm going to show you what you can do uh, to try to insulate yourself from this issue. But one of the uh, pluses I wanted to add here is this is why you want to try to put if you're going to plant strawberries i mean in the open space you can put a strawberry crown in you never know what's going to survive and make it i put this one at the edge of the bed right next to the corn and look at it it's doing just fine no signs of anthracnose got one over here too with some fruits no sign looks like slugs got that one so that's unfortunate. That'll go to the chickens. But nope. No signs of anthracnose. So I'm cool with that one. So if you are going to be planting, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread the wealth around. That might just help you uh, still get a harvest, even if something bad like fungi, uh, fungal issues happen. So. All right, so there you have it. This is one of those things that just happens from time to time, especially if you live, like I said, in a high humidity environment. Now, there are a few things that you can do to avoid uh, fungal issues if you live in a climate like mine. Obviously, you want to make sure that you are planting a lot because if something does happen to one of your beds, the more you plant around and spread out, uh, the less likely it's going to infect other beds as well. That way, hey, you may lose one, but hey, you got one farther away you'll still get a crop. It's not that big of a deal. You also want to make sure you're practicing good cleanliness standards so you're not bringing that uh, fungus to another bed. So you want to make sure you're cleaning your tools in between uh, using them. Uh, another advice, piece of advice I would give you is definitely make sure that you are increasing as much airflow as you possibly can, which means heavily pruning to make sure that air can really get up in the plant. Now with strawberries, obviously they're down low to the ground it's gonna be kind of hard to get good airflow. But with things like tomatoes, things like you know peppers, if you can prune, absolutely do so because it's only going to help you in the long run. Same thing with like zucchini, squashes. Uh, you'll be able to avoid a lot of fungal issues if you keep it pruned to make sure that that sun is working for you to dry as much moisture as possible. And one last thing, one last piece of advice I can give you is if you are having to water, water in the morning. That way the sun can work for you and dry all that moisture off the leaves. That way it's not sitting there overnight, increasing the chance of spores landing on that water spot and, and obviously multiplying as spores and fungus tend to do. So you have to water, water early in the morning. That way all day you're good to go. Now, if you're in a situation like me, when it's raining as much as it was at night, you can't do anything about that. That's just nature. But if you can avoid doing things uh, and just kind of change your plans, change your course of action so you can try to avoid as much fungal issues as possible. That's what I'm trying to get through with this video. Hopefully uh, you're able to take a few things that I was able to uh, mention here and put them in your own garden. Because even if you are in an area that doesn't have too many fungal issues, this is still something you gotta pay attention to because you very well might. So uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. If you did, please do me a humongous favor and give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I'll catch y'all later, okay?